Hey guys, uh, am I audible, visible? Just give me a second. Hello guys, a very good evening. Hope I'm audible and visible. Uh, yes. Okay, so good evening everyone. Uh, hi Fakti, good evening. I hope you're doing good. Uh, perfect. So we are going to the third way. Like here I want a third uh, video in the series. I'm going to start uh, continuing the same thing what we discussed last time, decoding CBCs. Today I'm going to take a one single case scenario or one single point and I'm going to discuss two differential diagnoses to the same point, right? Because last day we, last class what we did was we had four cases, one for acute bacteria, one for kind of sepsis, one for uh, impending sepsis, one for lymphocytic and one for your viral infection, right? The same way, we are going to just decode a single, a simple WBC, a simple hemogram report and we are going to do see it in the two different directions, right? Thank you, Sandosh sir. So the first thing, first case, I want you guys to, before going to the case, I want to give you a little bit brief about what do we mean by left shift of neutrophils or WBC left shift, right? Because this is something which is important you will be reading lots of them when you go into your clinics, when you go to internship, our left shift is there. So I think of an infection, right? So what do you mean by WBC left shift? We already had a very good understanding of uh, something in the last class, which was whenever there is a requirement, right? Can you guys, anyone uh, answer what uh, comes to mind if you remember that? Whenever I have a requirement of, uh, let's say, just give me a second. One second, guys. Sorry, fine. So uh, let's come back. So whenever we had a requirement of uh, more and more uh, kind of uh, the infection when my body requires more neutrophils, you guys said that the bone marrow will proliferate, compensate and release them prematurely, right? So that is what basically we call it as a neutrophilic left shift, fine? Okay, perfect. Uh, great shots. So similarly, I'll just describe what is why we call it left shift, though it might be required from an exam point of view at some point of time. And we'll also see what, how we are going to interpret left shift in two different case scenarios, right? So first, bone marrow has lots of cells. You must have read this in your physiology itself. The myeloblast is the first topmost cell, right? Then we have promyelocyte. Then we have myelocyte. Then we have metamyelocyte, right? Then we have neutrophilic band forms or stab forms. You can call any one of them band or stab forms. Then we call it neutrophils, the mature neutrophils, right? So the same way you have for eosinophils also, eosinophilic promyelocyte, eosinophilic metamyelocyte, eosinophilic band forms and eosinophils. That's how it is, right? So ideally and for easy way of uh, understanding, let's assume this is the rightmost cell or the most mature cell. So whenever in my peripheral smear, I start seeing all of these precursors, we call it left shift. Actually, that's not the reason why you call it left shift, but just for ease of understanding, we'll understand that whenever you see immature WBCs in your peripheral smear, not in the bone marrow, see in bone marrow, all these are completely normal, right? In a peripheral smear, we call it neutrophilic left shift, right? This is very important indicator. Something is happening, so the bone marrow is releasing them prematurely. It could be multiple possibilities. We're going to discuss two such possibilities now, fine? Ready, guys? So same way, some random question. Uh, low grade fever for 10 days. I'm going to display you a CBC report, just the WBC part, total count and the differential count. I want you guys to comment. What do you think? What do you think? Comment on whatever comes to your mind. Hello, Sama. I missed your text. So the WBC count is definitely elevated. I'm sure you guys agree that 82,000 by default is very, very, very high, right? The normal WBC count is somewhere around 10, 11,000, right? 11,000 is the upper limit in an adult, right? A very high WBC. So now I have one simple question, right? Can this be a cancer? Can this be a leukemia? 
yes or no how many of you guys think yes or no or it's an infection what do you guys think what do you think is the possibility can it be a leukemia can it be an infection or both are possible because normal is 10 11 thousand from there to 82 thousand is very 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 high right so there is a possibility of a leukemia but there is a possibility of an infection also like sepsis so sepsis will have a very severe infection right now for a normal uh, sore throat i might not have uh, 82000 wbcs but for leukemia definitely you will have an 82000 w 82000 wbcs right facty shots if we have not gone into much of depths of hematology but whenever you see any wbc count over 45 50000 always keep a cancer blood cancer as a differential diagnosis for convenience right it's very very rare for a simple infection to have such an elevator like four or five times elevated wbc count is difficult right so now neutrophils are more bands are seven percent and rest of them are there right so base of the four percent is a very important finding as well right i'll come to this finding very very soon right this is a first case scenario history is simple low grade fever 10 days the history might be masking history i just put it so that we want to discuss on the cbc count and not the history per se right now 25 year old high grade fever is the history can you guys comment on this what do you guys think is problematic here what do you think obviously this is also the same 62,000 very high right like i said anything about 45 50,000 i always skim keep yes i do keep infection as a differential diagnosis i am not denying that like a sepsis and also i do keep leukemia as a differential diagnosis possibility is there right again band forms of 14 i do have a little bit of metamelosis myelosis as well right so definitely there is a precursor lesion and there's a left to shift is also there plus a very 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 high w basic count right now i'm going to compare these two cases why this is important we'll come to it very we'll discuss it very very soon right so one of these is an infection the other one is a cancer there's a type of cancer how many of you have heard about this cancer called as cml a cancer called cml which is chronic myeloid leukemia okay though the classical finding is not history is not what i gave might not present with fever it's just for a convenience sake and for a discussion sake right a classical leukemia called as a chronic myeloid leukemia whenever you had this clue of basophil being more more than one or two or three or four basophilia it's very high Basophils normally is 0 to 1 percent. So if they see a significant basophil count, 2 percent also, I want you to think of CML. This is one of the important clue. Keep this in mind. Any question anywhere in real life, if you see basophilia, the first possibility I want you to think of CML only. Very, very important for you, right? Now, let's assume that uh, you are in a peripheral setup where uh, base, the counter is not that great for me to give band forms, metamelosate or blast. You just have a very simple basic cell analysis counter in the lab and it gives you WBC's count is high and these are my two differential counts, uh, counts, right? And how do I differentiate them? So this discussion is about only one thing. How do I differentiate a leukemia versus leukemia-like reaction? Can anyone tell me what's the suffix for like? Second is sepsis actually, but it is looking like leukemia, right? So we call it leukemia moid reaction it's a leukemia like reaction right you can definitely have a viva question on this or if your university exam has a short note there may be there though the amount of questions in neat pg with respect to leukemia reaction is reduced i hope they don't ask it this is a very basic concept right you might won't have any difficulty when you go to clinics to differentiate them right leukemoid reaction which is leukemia like reaction is seen in patients with sepsis a very very severe infection right in cml also i'll have an elevated wbc count in sepsis also i'll have an elevated wbc count so whatever is same i'm going to write in black color fine both in sepsis also there's a requirement of more new neutrophils right so definitely there'll be a left, sh left shift here also right you will have something called shift to left here also i'll have the same thing shift to left so that is not different at all that is the same you won't have any difference right so history will be there sepsis will have a different history by default you'll have a very high grade fever so history might definitely help you generally a cml chronic myeloid leukemia is seen in elderly patient 
will have generally a massively palpable spleen. If a patient has a massive spleen, I want to think of CML. In, though infections, I'll have splenomegaly, but massive spleen is difficult. Normally, if you see spleen, this part, right? If it crosses the umbilicus, we call it massive splenomegaly. That's not possible in with respect to sepsis, right? So here, fever or any localizing symptoms. When I say localizing symptoms, so something might have triggered sepsis, no? Let's say there's a um, lower respiratory infection, just, uh, difficulty in breathing, right? So that might be the trigger. So that could be there, localizing symptoms will be there, and a lot of fever history, high-grade fever generally, and the patient might look sick. That's a differential point here, right? Differentiating point for me, fine? Okay. Just a second. One second, guys. We'll just change the setting so that you can see the entire screen. Okay, perfect. Done. Okay, now let's come to this. So, there is a very important question which comes. Great vlogger. I hope you will uh, do very well. Uh, Dr. San Sanchit sir, Sudha ma'am, uh, Manjunath sir and Ashwin sir will take care of you in the third year as well, right? Perfect, right? So, there, there might be definitely a question which might come in a viva or even an MCQ point of view. Like, how do you differentiate them? Is there any lab test for me to differentiate them? Actually, that's not required. I can differentiate the help of history, then basophilia. For CML, basophilia is a very, very important finding, right? You will not see basophilia with respect to your leukemoid reaction, right? Good evening, Ronak, right? Here, there are a few peripheral smear finding. Please remember this, this can come in an exam. Toxic granulations. See, toxic granulations is nothing but they are very prominent granules, that's all. They are very, very prominent granules. The answer is simple. Why do I have them? This infection, no? I'll have to be much more powerful in destroying them. So my granules of neutrophils become prominent, right? And there's something called as dole bodies. Okay. So these two are findings seen in any infection. Obviously in sepsis, it'll be much more common, much more prominent. PS is for peripheral smear. This is something which you can easily differentiate. In spite of this, if they ask that, tell me one test. That test is an important test. It's called as lap score. This can come in a viva. Lap score helps me to differentiate sepsis versus leukemoid reaction. So leukemoid reaction versus leukemia, that is chronic myeloid leukemia, right? So what is LAP? LAP is simple. You need, need not memorize anything. I'll tell you the principle of LAP. You will definitely tell me, I'm, I have confidence. You will tell me what will happen in sepsis, what will happen in your CML, right? So LAP is leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, right? It's an enzyme. It's an enzyme seen in a neutrophil. The function of this LAP enzyme is it helps to fight against an organism and kill the organism whenever there is a requirement, right? That's one of the functions of LAP, leukocyte alkaline phosphorase. So LAP is seen in a normal neutrophil also. When a neutrophil is fighting, it's also the normal function of the neutrophil. It will be much more pronounced and it will be seen. How many of you tell, uh, I want everyone here online to answer this question. How many of you think in a chronic myeloid leukemia, the neutrophils are normal? Or do you think the neutrophils are mutated there? What do you guys think? Normal or mutated? They are? It's a cancer, no? Chronic myeloid leukemia. Do you think they are normal or they are mutated? They are absolutely mutated. Perfect, right? So, in CML, I actually don't have a normal neutrophil. They are all mutated forms of neutrophil. Okay? They are neutrophil looking... Microscopically, morphologically, they are neutrophil, but they are not normal. They are muted because they are cancerous, right? They are cancerous. Every cancer by default have a mutation. But in sepsis, but in sepsis or in leukemoid reaction, okay, what happens? They are normal and they are actually active neutrophils also, right? They are very normal and they are active neutrophils. That's why they will be able to eliminate the microorganisms, right? So now you guys tell me in which of these two conditions you will have elevated lab score. Like I said, LAP is an enzyme seen in neutrophil, which helps in fighting bacteria. So where do you have elevated LAP score? CML or leukemoid reaction? By default, in leukemoid reaction, you will undoubtedly have an elevated LAP score. So if my LAP score is elevated, fine. You think of a leukemoid reaction. If LAP score is reduced or zero, very, very, very less, or sometimes even can be zero. If it's zero, 
they are not normal neutrophils. They are looking like neutrophils, but genetically they are different. They are mutated. They don't do the normal function. We call it a CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, right? This is something which I want you to guess to remember. There might be questions coming on. How do you differentiate leukemia reaction versus leukemia? Few commonalities. Left ship WBC code elevated are commonalities. You might have basophilia in one. You might not have. You might have peripheral sphere findings in one. Clinical symptom is different. And a very important thing about lab score, right? There are few more things as well. Genetic testing. Though I won't even come into this to differentiate, it's but it's used to confirm your CML. Genetic testing, there's a chromosome translocation called as 922 translocation. T in brackets is translocation between 9th and 22nd chromosome. That's positive in CML. Obviously, sepsis, there'll be no chromosomal translocation or no chromosomal abnormalities at all. Fine. Okay. Perfect. See, the, yesterday I just took an extension of what we saw in the CBC uh, decoding series yesterday. And with this, I think we'll come uh, to an end of CBC decoding series with respect to WBC disorders. We'll definitely relook at it whenever we complete hematology because hematology is where we'll uh, require lots of lots of input about CBC, be it an anemia, thrombocytopenia or leukemia. We'll redo that. And going forward in the next class, tell me what you guys want to discuss because I want you to take your input. If Santosh is there, let Santosh also give input because if you guys are very young, so I have only limited topics which I can give you a correlation. Tell me what correlation you want or can we go into the basics of what is there in the lab, the lab instruments, uh, uh, about a microscope, about the stains, about the basic things. If you're going with that, uh, uh, that will be great as well. Yes, fact, I know that this is a bit, uh, you once you go to that point when you have uh, your general pathology done, you start hematosystemic pathology, it will automatically come easy to you fine fine we'll do one thing yeah, because more and more I correlate some things might look very difficult at this point of time it is not difficult you're just young that's all right so we'll go with basics we'll just have a quick look about uh, different types of uh, lab equipments one by one we have normal microscopy fluorescent microscopy electron microscopy frozen section different stains right we'll take one one tiny sessions of each of them so that if at all sometimes if they come in a viva or in an exam you'll be able to use it fine okay that's it for today See you soon. See you tomorrow. Uh, see you in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. And stay tuned for a surprise event which is happening at PW. And hopefully you will not miss it. Thank you. Bye-bye.